right. Welcome, one and all, to another exciting, fun-filled, action-packed edition of Midday in the Middle. Well, I hope I can live up to that. Um, this is Art for Truth. We are Art for Truth. We're going to do our little jam. Have some fun. Have some fun with the electric guitar. And what we might call Electric Tuesday. It's absolutely beautiful where I'm at. It's been a really great summer. Tomatoes and zucchini aren't... It's a little cool, I guess, by our usual standards. But I'm not complaining. We've had some warm days, but we haven't... Uh, and some hot ones. But it hasn't been excruciating. We've just... It's been a, it's been a good season. So I hope everybody in their own respective areas, places, and environments are... Enjoying the beauty they have and having a good time, good summer and good season. Despite quarantines and the viri and all this sorts of stuff. somewhere around 470 or so million years ago where we had plants finally made it to the earth, uh, to the earth, to the land. They've been in the water forever. They've made it to the earth. Ferns and other such things evolved and we had 470 million and counting of plant life. But for only 130, the last 140 or so of those years have we had flowers. So roughly 330 million years of plants. 330 million years of plants existed on this planet without any flowers. Mind-blowing. That's twice the length of the dinosaurs' existence on this planet. Roughly 160, 170 million years they lived on this planet. Give or take. If you double that, you have the time span where, like, plants existed on Earth without flowers. We had bugs. But obviously we didn't have pollinators, per se. such 
incredible examples on some of the basic principles of our physical reality of physics. Just phenomenal of mathematics, of all of these deeper concepts. If you've ever had a chance to watch a burn expand itself, it's a fractal, basically. So it, it's the fern, the fiddlehead, or whatever the fern. I mean, it's like a spiral. It's like essentially one of those golden mean spiraling patterns that we see, like in you know, in the sunflowers or in snail shells and the Milky Way, and so on and so forth. We have this spiraling pattern, and we have as that expands. Each of the little leaves that come off of it have its own curl spiral pattern. And then those expand to create sort of a larger fractal of what has been of, of the whole leaf. And who knows, microcosmically it might go many, you know, might go even deeper. Or microscopically, is that the word? Anyways, it might go deeper. There might be a whole set of fractal openings in the fern. It's awesome. It is awesome. No wonder it is. It is one of the longest lasting plants that we've had. One of the oldest terrestrial beings. That was my grandfather's name. He passed away in February 98. 98, 99, 98. Everyone thought he was going to make it to 100. He was in really good health until the very end. And good spirits, really cognitive. A phenomenal individual, an absolutely phenomenal individual was my grandfather. Very humbly phenomenal. participated in his community, had his own business, cared about people, didn't write any best-selling books, didn't invent some phenomenal science, although he was, he made false teeth, basically, and dentures and stuff, so he was definitely involved with the scientific process and the technical process of making things. And details and exactness. But he was a great man. Fern. Fernand. F E R N A N D. It took me quite some time as a kid to realize that his name wasn't Ferdinand, but Fernand. And I thought it was a funny name. Fernand. Everyone called him Fern. I call him Fair. French name. Fernand. Fernand Lanzri. Larry Lucille La Montagne. La Montagne for the uninitiated or the unfrenched means of the mountain. Or the mountain. La Montagne. But anyways, I digress. Fern. I I of course naturally would associate him with plant, how can you not? Okay, was that the name of the baby in the little baby dinosaur in the land before time? Or am I, or am I picking Fern Valley? I don't know. I might have my, my sh shit all mixed up. Anyways, that's that's not here nor there. But in coming to greater appreciate the fern, I started to, as a plant, as an entity, I started to greater appreciate my grandfather's connection to that name and, and the relationship.
we are, Evolution. Which means that we are evolving. Evolution is an active thing, not a concept, idea, theory, or belief. It is the active process of life being life. Of life growing, changing, morbid. works in the micro macro cosmic level of all life evolving in the mi micro bigger cosmic level of each individual form of life see evolution doesn't come from an entire species saying hey we're going to change it comes from an individual an individual modification whether it be dna or something more cosmic something some larger metaphysical energy
understand our place more and more, or understand our connection to, I should say, a deeper, infinite reality through and through. Also, very imminently, dangerously, and frighteningly, we are also, or excitedly, depending. We have began the inevitable path towards a whole new form of evolution. From the Anthropocene, a man-made, basically the, the man-affected age of reality, that we are now a part of the causal consequences of nature. And a big part of that is the evolution of our technology into quote-unquote artificial intelligence and robotic life. Make no mistake about it, we are on a path without question. In fact, it may be un unamendable at this point. We are on the path of fostering a whole new branch of the evolution of life through our connections to technology and how we connect it to the bio existence, biological existence of being. And we may be on the verge of two very imminent, at least two very, very imminent and important evolutionary branches. Biotechnological evolution and androidal evolution. Our consciousness, our essence to life, our connection, our knowledge, all of these things may very well develop into self-perpetuating life with its own decision, its own consciousness, its own soul, its own connection to that deep meaning of reality. It makes sense. I mean, if you think about it, we put our souls into the things we do ourselves, for better or for worse, us our physical life, our spiritual life, into all of our decisions. And even if we omit spirituality, as so much science does, unfortunately, which definitely needs to be changed, because they are not mutually exclusive, the lack thereof is also a factor into our evolution. It will be factored into the technological advances and the newer forms of life that will come from this endeavor that we have embarked upon. Skynet already above us, but art can save us. Art 
can be an intimate connection, an eminently necessary connection between us and the next stages of our evolution. And I'm not even talking about the evolution of us as these physical beings, because that's another branch of evolution too. Who's to say we're going to stay humans like this? Some of us might, like bacteria stay bacteria. Certain fish state fish, cats state cats, and so on, but we still evolve to be more as a whole, as a whole life entity. We as humans may evolve to be things a lot like elves. Telekinetic powers, magic, being able to understand the language of trees, mycelium, whales, and so on and so forth. All of these things eminently tied to our evolution and our existence and the presence past and future. I'm going to play a little bit. It's electric with some of the, the wonders and joys of what electricity can do. Whoops, wrong button.
Oh, I see. Okay. I'm just figuring things out on my pedal. You learn something new every day. All right, here we go. Creatures seem to come together. 
together and form this larger, very powerful, very ancient being. And I remember very clearly his eyes looking at me. It reminded me a little bit of, you remember the luck dragon and never ending story? Kind of, sort of, but like that, not exactly, certainly not that color, not shaggy, it was blue, but it had a gentleness in its eyes. But a seriousness, too. Make no mistake, this is not just some benign creature. And one thing that I remember so distinctly, and I'll never forget the feeling, ever, is that when I experienced meeting this entity, it felt he was absolutely the oldest thing I could have experienced. It felt older than infinity itself. It felt older than time. Like there wasn't even a language that we have to communicate the idea of how old and ancient this being is. Life as we know it began in the water. Why does that have to be relegated to our own terrestrial experience of water? Why is water not an energy? Water is perhaps manifested symbolically in hydrogen two parts to one part oxygen. Symbolically in our ocean, but in the reality, it is an energy of light, timelessness. Beyond the physical 
places. I don't know where or when, or how to even describe them on a plane. Firelands. Gridlands. A whole universe of patterns that look a lot like Legos. I need to do a little bit more research. There have been, um, you can see patterns in, the, in some of the ancient art that indicate to me that they also had a connection to this reality. There aren't many forms of human life that live away from water of some kind, and all water is connected to the sea. painting I started the night that I met the light by it then and it's essentially of that energy that spirit I haven't um, put it together in an anthropomorphic way that makes a recognizable image yet, per se. But it's there, you can see the head and the face to some degree. It exists, does exist compositionally, I put it in. But the essence of it, the colors, the ancient shaman and present day shaman, I believe paint their experiences in other realities to try to share the energy, the information, the knowledge with their folk, with other people that you can't find necessarily in college. Okay. Painting is so eminently important. I, for our understanding, for our connection to things, I think there are ways that we can do it that are less pollutive. One of my dilemmas lately has been the amount of um, you know pollution that can go into painting. It's not like plastic products, you know, paint can chip off and land places and this and that, but I believe that we will evolve ways to continue to be able to explore with the type of with paint the way we do with the paint that we've created, but with paint that's actually much safer 
that's not polluted, but that can still last forever. There are ways, there are ways. enjoying themselves, having some fun. I am. Thank you for letting me share both my thoughts and my music. Um, yes, these thoughts do not represent those of Instagram, only of me. All right, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to lay down a loop, like a drum loop kind of thing, and um, just jam on it for a bit. We've got uh, 10 minutes or so before we get cut off. So I'm gonna try that, just play around. Another use of our electricity for Electric Tuesday. I wanna thank you all once again so very much from the bottom of my H-E-A-R-T for your ear and your time.
night. And on that note, before we get cut off here by the machine, we will say good night. Good, good night. Good night. Good day. Good everything. Thank you all very much once again for joining. Thank you for your ear and your time. From the bottom of my heart. And please keep making art. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you all who have joined and watched this. Much appreciated. I don't know how to like or comment on any of the things, but uh, thank you all.